Hi, Wargame Buddy here, and welcome to my review of Shapers of Gaia, a new game designed by Ian Cooper and Jan Gonzalez, which is being published in October by WizKids. Hopefully this review will help you decide whether you would like it or not. Right now I rate this game as a 6 out of 10, so keep listening to hear what's good and not so good about it. This is the end of a game set up for two players. It takes about an hour to play with two, so not too long at all. If you go three players then maybe touch longer up to about 90 minutes and there's no solo mode. The central premise is really interesting. Essentially we live on this planet Gaia which has been wrecked presumably by human activity. So we've been stuck in the vault in the middle here for millennia. However now we're coming out of the vault to restore biomes of land and introduce animals to rejuvenate the ecosystem. I really like how the premise is animals first rather than buildings and battles. When you get the game out of the box, it does seem really complex. There's all these different components and there's six different shapers you can choose from. However, there's some pretty classic mechanisms in play here. Area control, set collection, asymmetric powers and engine building. And each turn you can really only choose from one of two actions. So it's not that difficult to learn to play once you get into it. Action one is to introduce an animal, which will cost you raw resources and sometimes some of your special resources. Pay more raw resources to introduce a bigger animal. Each animal introduced will get you prestige points and also open up one of these special actions. Let me show you how it works. So say I want to introduce this scavenger into a forest. So I need to pay two seeds. I then place my scavenger on the biome. I also move my shaper onto that biome. I've opened up a new benefit on my board, so this thing now is available to me. I've introduced a scavenger, so I take a scavenger card from here and I place it down onto my forest row. And then the really cool bit is I get to activate all of these different actions. So you can see you want to get some kind of an engine going down here. The other action is to restore a biome. So we take these biomes from our hand, normally these would be in your hand and not visible to the other player. And you can put the biomes down on the board, they have to be adjacent to the caretaker and one other hex. And then having placed it, you get to choose one of these two bonuses, so either a couple of resources or a resource and a victory point. And then your opponents um, get to pick the other one. You can continue and introduce additional biomes up to three biomes so you can get um, a few things there but it's really clear to me that introducing an animal is the better move and I found in my games that you know you really only want to restore biomes when you're forced to although there can be some reason in the late game when you might want to do it. So what's the aim of the game? Well essentially it's to get the most prestige points by the game end. The game end is triggered by one player having only one animal type left on their board or when the available biomes to draw is, it, is exhausted. Once you've done that then we finish the turn and we have one more turn and then we resolve the story. How do we get prestige points? Well there are lots of ways and this scorecard is truly terrifying the first time you look at it. However there are quite a few simple ways and I'll just go through them now. Firstly we score the animal behaviours. These vary a little from game to game which is nice although there are only two options for each animal and you don't get that many points from them, so it doesn't really drive the strategy in my experience. Next we score for all our animals, so you've got these prestige point amounts here, which you add up. Uh, notice if you have any of these uh, toxicity tokens left at the end of the game, they cover up victory points, so they can cost you um, near the end. Next we score any of our leftover resources, so three for the seeds there, another couple there for the energy and nutrients, and nothing for the spores and the shards. Next we score DNA tokens. You get those when you restore a biome onto a DNA token you get to take it into your hand and then at the end of the game you put them out on all of your species cards and these score as the square of how many it is in each row. So we've got three blues here so that scores nine points where it's just a solitary yellow there and he gets one point. Anything we can't place so this red doesn't have a place ends up here covering up our victory points on our animals and if there really isn't any spaces left then we get minus five points for it so it can be quite costly. Lastly we score any prestige tokens we got during the game. And we fill all our details in on here 
add it up, and the person with the highest is the winner. As I said before, it's quite a nice concept and it's a fairly quick game to play. So maybe a good choice if you like those kind of quick, simple, straightforward games. But I don't know, for me, it just feels like it's missing something. It feels like a little bit of an oversimplified version of Terra Mystica. And really, it just makes me want to play Terra Mystica, which is like one of the best games ever created. I do like the, the differences in the shapers. But they're not, they are different, but they're not that different that it really sort of drives the strategy when you play them, I've played pretty much all the shapers now and I don't have a favourite, which I think is, is quite telling. One big issue I have is that I do find two player quite unbalanced. Uh, there's no compensation for going second and since there are only three open biomes at the start of the game, um, you generally find the first player snaffles up two of those and then the second player is almost forced to open up new biomes, uh, allowing player one to come and then snaffle a third one, a uh, third animal before um, the second player's even got two on the board. And this early advantage is a little bit too strong. So every game we played, um, the first player's won. I know you can put, play, put animals in the vault here um, to try and sort of force player one to open up the board, but you know the player one's got more resources, so they can probably keep matching player two there, um, which means that you know that advantage is always there for player one. Obviously, three player, that's a lot more balanced because there's three opening biomes and three players. So the first player is the one who's forced to open up the biomes and that sort of removes some of their advantage. Maybe two player, you could remove one of these biomes, make it water so you can't build on it or allow people to build on the caretaker's opening square just to sort of balance out and force the first player to open up the game a bit more. Alternatively, you could just have a lot of compensatory starting resources so maybe the second player could start with you know two starting resources rather than the one that the first player gets so in conclusion i think there are a few tweaks maybe which could help balance two player and maybe we'll get some fan made animal behavior cards or or shapers to make more interesting strategic choices which you know might just push it to a seven but for now i'm rating this as a six out of ten so you might like it but i can see reasons why you wouldn't let me know what you think in the comments bye Board Game Buddy